friends, here we are at the third installment in this retro K-pop video series where we have been taking a look at the retro concepts in K-pop that draw inspiration from the various musical styles across the decades. As K-pop fans, we know that the genre does an amazing job at taking inspiration from any corner of the world and history and applying it in a musical production that works in today's modern music. And so, for part 3 in this series, we'll be going over the 1980s to the 90s in music that made up the last part of the 20th century. Please understand that every song featured in these videos are not exclusively the only examples representing the sounds, as there's so many more to include. In addition, the songs discussed within each decade often borrow heavily on not just one style, but several, and some of those styles borrowed from styles before. Hopefully, you'll have noticed a combination of styles showcased in this video series. K-pop producers are great at blending styles even within one song. And why shouldn't they? It sounds great. I'm just mentioning one or two styles, but when I mention the influence a musical style had on a song, it's likely you'll also be able to point to another style of the song as well. You should try it yourself. And so with that, let's get started with part three of the retro concepts with the 1980s. The 80s were an interesting time for pop because synthesized music really took off during this period. Although synth technically began in the 1960s, it was really developed in the late 1970s with disco and in post-disco and was used, and in some cases overused, the way auto-tuning was used in the 2000s. Prior to that, music was generated by real instruments and might be manipulated from there. Synth is an iconic sound and it works well with pop, which is why a lot of K-pop producers run to it. And here are just some of those 80s synth pop examples. Disco and new wave music had some of the same rhythm and instruments as disco, but focused on R&B and jazz rhythms. There was a lot of overlap. Bands at this time could create an entire orchestra on a synthesizer. But what they retained was the characteristic soul. This style also relied much more heavily on synthesization, from drums to brass and reed instruments, but overall it was much more stripped down and didn't rely on the crazy layering of disco. Ow!
music was always present throughout the early 20th century in some form or another, and freestyle music took it up a notch. It incorporated electronic funk music with a Latin rhythm and heavy syncopated drum sound. This made it a great sound for breakdancing, and today with heavily choreographed videos. I'd say it definitely still has a strong following. Synth pop, on the other hand, definitely sounded electronic and new technologies allowed musicians and producers to manipulate natural sounds, and they did. It wasn't trying to sound like natural instrumentation, even though some of that was included. The sounds of nature, such as water drops and thunder and lightning sounds, were a thing, and sound distortions were common. But behind it all were the bright, catchy beats of pop music. The 1990s saw an evolution in the synth style, and house music arose from freestyle faded. The steady beat of house dominated dance clubs and entered pop charts for a while, and we're seeing a resurgence of that. House is known for its deep bass lines with this high syncopation and added layers throughout the song, and like freestyle, it's great for dancing and choreographed moves. Mixing sounds and music samples between two vinyl records was popular in clubs at the time. evolved into well-known grunge, Britpop, industrial rock, and other offshoots like ska, which continue to work their way into retro pop sounds. Rap, on the other hand, absorbed pop elements to become New Jack Swing, the West Coast G-Funk and Hip Hop, 
New Jack Swing was a fusion of hip hop, R&B, and synth music using light melodies and clear vocals while G-Funk was a laid back and slower with a steady, mostly unchanging bass rhythm. It was better suited to songs with the storytelling aspect. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this retro K-pop video series so far. I have a topic or few to discuss in a future video for this series. Stay tuned for that later. Until then, please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons for me. I appreciate you for stopping by. Please check out many more of my videos on all things K-pop, and I'll see you next time.